An invasion is coming. Or at least it was. I, I don't know what happened to it. But uh, anyway, welcome back, everyone. Good to see you all here for more Manor Lords, our fourth episode. And a very important one is now we've unlocked taxation. Click on the Taxes tab after selecting your manor to set levels of taxation. Taxes can boost your treasury and influence at the cost of making your population poorer. Right. Well, we haven't unlocked it, I guess, officially yet because the manor is still under construction. And I think that's exactly what they're waiting for. Open the castle planner requires refueling. Oh, wait. Um, this is strange. Um, well, we have uh, some materials here, I think, to build the manor, but it's not yet completed. I'm not exactly sure. There we go. Uh, raiders are near. So it looks like we're about to be raided here in 271 days. Welcome back again to Manor Lords. I think the um, I loaded the save here in the uh, graphical uh, glitch of the grasping there should be, actually be a construction site. But regardless, we're doing big things, good things. We're starting to get ready with trading at our trading post. We got more citizens coming into the city, and we're about just about ready for taxation. They've also told us that policies have unlocked, so we can go ahead and act uh, on some more of those. So we can either um, citizens will skip every fifth meal, which will reduce food consumption, but will decrease approval, or wild animals on rich deposits breed twice as fast at the cost of 50% reduced yield from crops, which is a good policy, except we're about to basically start farming. So I don't know if we want to do either of these at the moment, uh, but we'll have to see if we can unlock more in the future. Unfortunately, the second tier seems to be locked in early access as well as the uh, last two on tier one. But there does seem to be quite a lot of policies that might be able to help us with our development. Speaking of development, unfortunately we have no development points, but we did go down the beekeeping tier. And so we are going to be building some apiaries and that will allow us to produce honey and maybe even wax. Eventually, I think we can get candles or at least maybe sell that off. That's at least what I'm assuming. And uh, hopefully that is something that we can do. There's so many different resources in this game, honestly. It's hard to keep them all straight. We got honey under food there, but we also seem to have uh, wax under crafting materials. So perhaps it's something that we can make into candles. There it is under commodities. Now, hopefully it's something we can sell raw. But anyway, thank you very much again for watching this series. One of the biggest series on the channel, one of the most anticipated games of all time, and biggest on the on the channel for the demo and for its hype. And it's been a long time waiting, but it's been seven years now for this developer to finally release it into early access. And I hope it's a, a seven more until they finally say, "Hey, I think I think this game is is good. 1.0 is here." Uh, I hope it's a passion project along the lines of Stardew Valley, where so many things get added for free over time that it's just one of those must-have games, like it's almost a legal requirement. But yeah, so welcome back for more. All right, let's go ahead and walk around on a rainy day just to kind of see how things look. We're building more and more of our village, getting more and more homes, and now waiting for them to be occupied as occupants are moving in quite frequently, actually. We've got a lot of people moving into the city and immediately getting to work on our forestry industry. And that basically is cutting down trees and clearing the way for a farm that will eventually be built on the other side of the road. That is kind of the one main thoroughfares through the area, as well as one near our Lord's Manor. Good day, sir. Wow, people carrying stuff and whatnot. Looking good. Right, <clears throat> so over here. Oh, look at that. The farm is actually under construction and about uh, maybe over halfway done. Yeah, approaching that as our oxen is uh, fritz, fritz there delivering all the different types of uh, logs to the logging camp here. We've cut down a ton of trees. We're also going to be building a windmill here at about 90% efficiency, which is pretty damn good. So we've cleared out the area. We're going to continue to clear more and uh, also turn that into a good spot for our uh, farm, our processing of flour, and then we'll build a communal kitchen here for the making or baking of bread. Good stuff. Now with our... Lord's Manor over here, my house, basically. We're going to go ahead and put a wall around that and put that here as it controls one of the main thoroughfares there and is pretty close to another one just down here. So we'll have kind of a control area around roads that come in and out of our lands right there. And we'll also raise our militia. Now, the enemy should be attacking in like 200-something uh, days. We'll see exactly if they get delayed or whatnot. But I wonder for this game how the challenge mode will work. We've got about one year free under our belt to build the city, and then we've got another year free, knowing that there'll be a pending attack. And we'll have to see exactly what the enemy does. If they maybe charge us some sort of a fee, or if they say, uh, you know, like, hey, I'll attack you in a year if you don't pay up, that kind of thing. Or maybe burn down half the village. Looks like we just got a trade complete. We started with seven or five gold. We're now up to seven. And we have people now bringing more stuff to the trading post to sell. We're bringing excess berries, meat, firewood, 
I think some uh, pelts down there too, and some other things that hopefully will sell for a high price, which will then allow us to build and upgrade more of these uh, burgage plots to have something other than what they've got now. Like, for example, just a uh, plain old, uh, well, nothing. But, looks like we can build a bakery, or we can eventually get chicken coops, which, of course, will get meat for the chickens and also eggs, and then that can be sold back at the market right here. I feel like we're going to need to build another market. When I first built this, I was like, wow, I built that way too big, but... Actually, it's kind of nice now. Hey, it's time to start farming. And it looks like that video right there might be TBD on um, how it shows the making of a farmhouse and how to rotate crops, etc. Farmhouse employs families who work on the fields. The workforce is distributed proportionally in accordance with the field's set priority level. When the crops are growing, they absorb certain nutrients from the soil, temporarily lowering, lowering its uh, fertility and thus diminishing yields over time combat this oh don't don't mention combat consider changing up crop types or even better leaving the field follow for a year yeah so basically letting the uh, crops wither away or whatnot and um, allowing grass and other things in there harvesting it but leaving something behind and then maybe growing clover as a technique or ha having uh, cattle graze on there or horses or whatever and um, those are different IRL techniques that they could employ but there might be a way to actually set that here. Well, now that the farmhouse is complete, we can employ up to, wow, eight people there and a storage of 1,200 for both generic storage and pantry of 1,200 for uh, more than likely, um, that might be for flour. Maybe the top slot is for wheat itself and the bottom one is processed stuff that might be able to be brought down from the windmill. We'll see. But they're building it and that's exciting. Let's go ahead and build ourselves a farm field now as we're getting close Let's to that. So we're going to try to grow, uh, let's see, emmer was pretty good, but barley, no, it was rye, I think was the best, yes. When we built this one here, I was looking mostly at the emmer fertility to just make sure we could try to leave a space for that. It looks like we can grow some of it down here, uh, but we've got, I mean, look at all the space that we've got for rye, that's crazy. Plotting the fields. Fields in Manor Lord, uh, Lords need to be very large to be effective, but also take a long time to plow by hand. For a starting village, try a field size of about one morgan. What the hell is that? Later, if you want to, uh, the region to focus on farming, you can consider spending a development point to unlock heavy plow upgrade, which allows plowing much bigger fields uh, far more effectively utilizing oxen. We'll be doing that probably on our field to our left or to our west of our current plot. Also remember to check the ground fertility. Some crop types are more picky about the soil uh, that they grow on. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll build a, uh, we'll just start with a farm field right here, I think. Now, they mentioned large farm field, so he said about one Morgan. Oh, it actually measures it out for us, so they want to go with about one. Uh, we'll try to make it... Oh, there we go. We'll make it hug the, the fence there. So that's about half. And that's about one right there, so uh, we'll go just slightly over at 1.1. That's fine. And that's what's recommended. Boom. That's new from last time. I don't recall that. So now we have ourselves crop type of follow, which is basically raising the fertility, but we'll start immediately with the, uh, ooh, wheat at 40%. Oh. Oh, that can also be uh, processed into ale. Actually, they didn't report on wheat. There's not a wheat report, is there? Or do they mean rye? I think they mean rye. I would uh, kind of uh, separate that, I think, so there's no confusion, but... Regardless, we got our first farm field down, and we'll start getting our first people working in there. Might be a little too late, obviously, to work on this. It's now uh, June, but we can still build these and have them readied. And the nice thing is, is that we don't have to actually make the fields, right? We don't have to wait for people to come over and plow the land, cultivate, and uh, build fences and other things that might be needed. It kind of just magically happens. It just works. It just works. Thank you, Todd. All right, let's go ahead and add another field. We could just have these turned off, too. We don't have to have these functioning. So, emmer right there. Actually, that's rye. So, that was at a uh, much higher percent than emmer. Flax, there's pretty much no can do here for flax. There actually is a little area uh, right behind the church. But I really think we should have the other district work on that. But we should have some basic food here, for sure. And we'll alternate our crops, because obviously that's good for sustainability. And just in case of a uh, crop failure, which would be uh, not a great thing. Oh, this is 1.5 as well. 
Well, look at that. Doesn't that really bring the game together when you start seeing farm fields like that? Before it's so, like, row housey and kind of dreary. Also, I built these uh, very narrow together to just to try to speed things up. When we do our um, prosperity series where we're playing kind of a more peaceful version like the demo where we're not worried about combat, that's when we'll build the ultimate looking village and I think learn a lot more about uh, both balancing form and function, with function still being a little bit more important in this game mode. But, of course, making things look beautiful and satisfying is something we tried to do with our placement of the church higher on the hill as best we could. And also trying to lay out these houses, not in just like a grid pattern, even though we kind of did. But you, you see I broke it up a little bit. We tried to make some variety, and I think effort is important. And that made the difference for Greg when he made this game, of course. Looks like we've got 27 regional wealth. Oh boy, this is a big day for me. I can finally build something else at our plots. This is huge. Uh, we can build a goat shed, which can... Pro produce hides. We have a, a chicken coop that can produce eggs. I think we're going with the eggs. Excellent. Absolutely. Wow. You know, I, I'm glad we got cracking on that finally. I mean, it, it was all going to shell, but luckily we were able to, uh, you know, keep abreast of the situation and really uh, not pluck up. Anyway, uh, ooh, look at this. I love the natural little barriers around here, too. There's not really a fence here, but you can definitely tell there's I've been some preservation of the almost like old hedgerows, um, but there's other things that we can use for that. Little trees in there too. I think those are just visual, or they'll be cleared by the people who can go and work there soon. More houses coming in. Hopefully, all these people in the future will be working at that farm, because eight people to work each field is going to be uh, very important. Let's set that other crop to uh, barley as well. One for barley, unfortunately at 13%, another one at 40 So, But fertility can go up over time. We should be able to improve that with the follow. And uh, as you can see here, we can make second and third year. So another great and perfect tip here, and this is incredibly important, is to turn on that crop rotation and make sure you do that. So that way you can have a year of barley, then follow, and then you can go back to uh, like wheat or something like that. And we'll do the same over here. So we'll start with wheat, then we'll go with a year of follow, and then barley. So they'll kind of rotate. Now the problem is year two, next year, we have no crops being planted in that year. So we'll have to make either one or two more uh, farm fields. So we can definitely build that uh, probably around here. I also built an apiary, you know, like little beehives near the farms. I'm not sure if it gives it any sort of bonus, but it does look like people have to work there in order to um, take care of the bees and gather the honey. It's not automatic. A lot of my trial and error here, if you remember on the channel, or if you've ever heard of a game called Farthest Frontier, that game is another game that if you love Manor Lords, I think you should try out because it really mimics a lot of the great stuff of Manor Lords and does things a little differently. It's a good uh, kind of a mix-up. If you get a little exhausted from Manor Lords and need a break, I think Farthest Frontier is a great one that has crop rotation and uh, combat and other things as well. Kind of more like Anno or Banished. And I like that. Wow, the farm has really popped off. Look at this. We've got the uh, windmill already completed. Beautiful. We've got three farm fields built. Huge fields, really. And uh, I didn't actually check the size on that one, but we'll do a follow year. Then we'll do a we'll do a wheat year. And then we'll go back to follow. So this one will be our in-between, but it might be more fertile because of the uh, kind of the the weight in between. We can also build a field down here if we want to. We might get, be getting a little carried away with our fields, but uh, honestly, they're beautiful to build. We'll save the rest of this for adding more down here. We could do maybe flax or something in the future, but this is just supposed to make some basic bread and not really feed more than just hopefully most the village. Um, but the other one that we build over here, when we start expanding over to uh, this county, yeah, I'll, that's what I'll just call it. Uh, this is going to be really fertile. And that's going to be really, really good for exports and for feeding everyone else. So long as we make it that far, we'll see. Okay. Well, now we've got that going. We've got more houses being built. Speed up time a little bit. Love how it automatically built around the apiary, too. And it also built automatically around the farmhouse and at the border of the logging camp. Outstanding. 28 logs can be stored there. And I think we're good on logs, aren't we? We have 126 timber. I think we can cut that down to just one person working there. 
And let's see what they can do at the farm. Maybe we can get something ready. Farming cycles. If the field is set to is not set to follow, workers will plow it and sow the crops as soon as possible. Yield will increase as it grows and is harvested in September during the harvest season. It's already June for us. So I don't know what they could... I don't think they'll crop uh, grow any crops at the moment, but they might attempt to possibly plant and maybe... Every game's different, so maybe they'll plant these and then the seeds will kind of be on pause until they start growing next year. Who knows? And it looks like that might be the case. Or at least they're cultivating the land. That's going to be a lot of work. That's a lot of work. We'll get more people to work on that as time goes on. More construction complete. That's beautiful. Look at all that. Now, I think from the demo, there were more muddier fields, too. So I think when the cultivation is done... Yeah, there we go. So they're ripping up the land um, with uh, rakes and hoes and other things like that. And that'll look uh, nice and muddy when it comes springtime. And that was uh, one of the things that I always liked looking at in our demo series, was looking at how the ground just looks so different. You'd have certain crops growing at different times, and that's really neat. Whoa, Waldbrand being claimed. Resolve the claim on the battlefield. Negotiate are coming soon. Oh, we so we absolutely have to fight in this game. There is no using the king's favor or negotiating. Wow. So these guys are claiming their first territory. Hey, we both start with one. It's almost like chess a little bit. Um, or like zone control. So they've captured their first area, and now they're moving. We both start with one, and they're moving to their second one. So we'll have to do the same eventually. Get our militia up and go for that. Wow. Well, we'll, that, we'll let them claim it. I mean, we've only got 17 people in the town. I mean, there's not much we can do in that case. Uh, but we could raise a militia if we can, uh, or rather, mercenaries to join our militia if we happen to sell enough stuff. And look at that. Speaking of just that, we sold 40 wealth worth of stuff there. Beautiful. And we got some great approval, 82%. So at least we're, we're running the city good so far, according to everybody. So that's nice. Let's go ahead and make some more carrot farms. Let's pop down a another chicken coop. And let's do one more vegetable garden if we can. We're short on five. But we'll hold off on doing that. And uh, hold most of the money for the plots. So that way we can actually get more food. This is a great way to feed all your people right at the beginning. Foraging for berries, having a small vegetable garden in a few homes, and hunting. That's the way to go before you start this farming. We all want this, like day one. But at least we got this up middle midsummer year one. Well, like 1.5. We're not quite into year two yet, so. Oh, man. Resolve the claim on the battlefield. We have no troops. I'm not sure if we ha would have to go into battle right away, but uh, some t something tells me I don't even want to see it. I don't want to know. Uh, where's our manor? Was our manor canceled? We had all the materials and stuff to delivered up here. What? I got canceled, guys. Oh, there it is. It's hard to tell. Where is it? Oh, there. Okay. Refueled. I see nothing for my actual uh, manor. Oh, apparently there's people who work here. Open the castle planner. Oh, there we go. Ah, okay. So this is what we'll have in the future. Like our uh, garrison in the middle and the little roadway going there. But we need more materials for all this construction. Tax office too. Looks like we need 97 planks. We have 46. So we should probably get people on that and then we can actually build that. Oh, it says limit reached on the tax office, but I don't see it. This is our main home here. I don't actually see the tax office, but we'll continue to uh, make planks then so we can at least fortify that position. Maybe we can defend with the militia inside there if the enemy attacks. We might have the opportunity to play defensively for the first year. No logs in storage. Okay, well, uh, we'll just kind of wait until they make more planks. We, we need about 97. I'm actually selling some planks too for cash, so let's make sure we stop that then. No more sales on planks. More people moving in. Good. So yeah, this is still a work in progress. This manor is going to be a little tricky to keep track of and monitor. But I think we can be forgiving on our first run and really just 
be in awe at the game and its beauty and how it plays out and that it's actually being delivered. The excitement is real. For sure. And we got an extra person to work, maybe on the farm. Looks like that enemy army actually has to be in Waldbrand for a while. I didn't notice this until now, but it looks like a loading bar behind the text being claimed. I think that should be either um, moved below or... Um, I think maybe... You know, we're all used to games like Call of Duty or Battlefield where when you're capturing an objective it just shows like a like a moving white arrow or whatever, a set of arrows moving to the right showing you that they're capturing or something. I think that would convey that information. And being able to see what percentage they're at. Because if you've sent troops and they're about to capture, maybe you want to give your troops an order to march or hustle. Look at that. There we go. The farm is working, man. Nice. Now what's interesting is we've assigned uh, three families there. Not just necessarily people. So, you know, a whole group will work on a job like that. I always refer to it as, oh, I'm going to assign a person there. But it's, it's a whole family effort. And kids come along to learn the job, too, in some cases. Look at that. Certainly done a lot of building. What else can we plop down? We can do a sheep farm and start importing sheep, too. We have our communal oven to eventually make uh, flour into bread. And we've already got, uh, you know, the flour already being made. So let's plop that over here. People will want to live next to that, the communal bread kitchen. We can also put down a sheep farm, too, and make a uh, pasture for them. There's a way we can make a pasture. put them maybe over here and keep all of our farming to the left go ahead and make a big oh it's pasture space 53 for 53 animals uh, I'm not sure how many we're gonna get let's keep it to like maybe 20 actually you know what this is fine here that's almost 50 I think the pasture uh, then means we can put the sheep farm inside. No, it has to be built next to it. Well, we'll put the sheep farm right across the street. There we go. So now we'll buy sheep eventually. We could build all this stuff now. We also have a tavern that we could build. Uh, fulfills one level of entertainment requirement for the uh, burgage plots. Like many of your citizens, it needs ale to function. But, from what I recall, we built this before, and it might actually function as a spot for entertainment or socializing beforehand, even if we don't supply it. Might be worth it to build. Especially now. Ooh, this will be right nice in the center of town. The tavern right here. Alright, all of you watching, with well, already I'm sure you've got the glory to Raptori down below in the comments section, but if you made it this far in the video, congratulations. You now have a chance to name our tavern. So give me some good and creative names down below in the comment section. I do this all the time. We play games where we have to build or manage a tavern. And you guys come up with some real good stuff. So I'm expecting some really top-tier quality answers from everybody. So throw your name into the ring or name into a hat or hat into a back alley. How, <laughs> however you say that. Yeah, give it a try. Let me know uh, what would be a good name down below. All right, what else can we do? I think we built most of the things here. In the game, apiaries. We haven't built a forester's hut yet, but I don't want to plant new trees just yet. Saw pits, all good. Trading post and a livestock trading post, too. Oh. Well, actually, that's kind of cool. Then that means we could raise sheep and then sell them, too. We don't necessarily have to uh, slaughter them. Let's put that down there as well. We have so much timber. I actually want to get another person and build another saw pit. I think we should be using as much of this uh, log or timber and turn that into planks as quickly as possible. Oh, we have a clay furnace. So we can mine clay and then turn that into clay tiles, which we can sell for a lot of money, apparently, from this region. 
We've got a tannery as well that'll turn hides into leather, so another thing we can sell. But again, we need people to be able to do these jobs, and I think the first thing we need to do is survive. So the saw pit is of utmost importance to finish the Lord's Manor. So let's give that a high priority. There we go. And we'll keep monitoring everything. We'll have to start mining our clay there. Looks like we have 210. Not sure exactly how that, or how much that conveys into pottery. Or rather the tiles. So we'll see shortly. Okay, sheep farming. That's underway. We've got our manor, of course. Build a little uh, milestone there and whatnot, a shrine. More people moving in. Great. That's another person for the saw pit there. We'll get those planks up in no time. Now, how do we upgrade these? Unlocks new extensions, including artisan workshop residential requirements, will increase. I'm not sure exactly what the requirements are there. Linen, leather, and yarn. So we will want to build a tannery so we can upgrade our homes to level 2. And we are getting leather from all of our deer hunting, or whatever, out in the woods. So we could probably build another... Um, year-round supply of uh, hides. So let's build that. And let's do another one so we can export some of the leather too. Beautiful. Oh, that's going to stink. But for the good of the city. The city must survive. Oh, that's, that's something else. That's something else. <laughs> if you know the game, let me know down below. All right, I think it's under industry for our leather. There it is, the tannery. Oof, that's going to stink a little bit too. So we can build that somewhere. Oh, maybe over here. Kind of near a storehouse, but not in the center of town. We did build another storehouse here. So building it by the clay pit might be all right. But we don't want to build it too close to the hunting grounds because that might... Scare off the animals. I I do know that there's a, as we saw in the game options before, there's an overlay, just like how rye and uh, water flow have an overlay. Smell also has an overlay too, so it might be important to keep this building away from the town. It could really make a lot of people mad. Being that close to something that smells like ammonia and whatever else. Don't want to build it down there. We're going to expand. Don't want to build it near the animals because they might not like that, but maybe they won't know the difference. We'll uh, build it next door so they know we need <laughs> that we mean business. There we go. All right, we'll do that. Wow, we got four people in the city now? Great. More homes being completed. Beautiful. Lovely little village. And getting stronger. In the meantime, let's put one person there. And two people will be assigned to this new saw pit as soon as it's done with its construction. Very shortly. And that should look like the one just next door. Making some planks for us. Okay, how are we doing on storage? Good. I think we could probably try to build another market too. Let's build it over by the church. And that looks like this. Now oh, we got our bees over there too. Well, let's go ahead and move the apiary if come we can. On, come on. Feast your eyes on our fine selection. We cannot. Hmm. It would be good near the church. We could build it right here on the street corner instead, just across the street. Just down the road and across the street a little bit. And we know that this isn't that crazy to build it like this. 
So based on the size that we built the other one here, going a little bit bigger will be alright. Plus it's uh, going to be where more houses will be and near the church. And that ends up being a place where a lot of markets are anyway. I can't believe we're playing this game. I can't believe how cool it is and how much fun it is. Tavern time. Let's pre-plan that out too. Actually, we, we built that, we're building that one there. But I wanted to build a, uh, not tavern, but a brewery time. I know that's going to be a part of that too, and I wanted to see if that was listed. Because we are growing, oh, maybe it's actually brewed on site? Let's check real quick. No, it doesn't say anything about that. It would be under production, though, or industry. Bloomery, Smithy, Clay Furnace, Malt House. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Barley into malt needs to be refueled once per month. So the Malt House would be perfect near the uh, farms. Come one, come all. Feast your eyes on our fine selection. Put that right there. So all the barley and stuff will be stored there. Eventually, we're going to get rid of the... Um, the little logging camp here, it's going to be shut down, I think, right now. Oh, log storage only 10 out of 28. We'll get more and more uh, logs being brought back. In fact, I think if we go into this menu and go into the decoration tool, we can see if there's a lot of logs sitting out there still. And it looks like there's a few over here, yeah. So there's still some logs to bring back. So eventually we'll move that and or delete it and then have that take it by more farm space. 26 planks still. Got an extra free person here. Let's add another firewood cutter. More homes means more fuel being used. And how's food? Eggs, berries, meat. We'll have to prioritize some more vegetables too. And build a vegetable farm here. Keep making everybody's life better. More money coming in. Good to see. Okay. Want to get all those planks so we can build our fort. Seems to be stuck at 26, though. Alright, we'll make sure we take two for ourselves. Maybe that will change the results. Man, this music's outstanding, isn't it? Glad that we're done with construction for a while. We've got so many uh, homes here. We've actually got 25 living space and 22 family. Well, actually 23. New families moving in too. Oh, we might need to build more. We might be out of housing space already, actually. All right, well, the market's there. See if we can build some plots there. Uh, that's not going to look too well, is it? Well, we'll build some here. There we go. And we have a well around here in another market. So things are where they should be, in my opinion. Actually, let's do this. An alternative way to build might be to do this. Plot too small. I want it to try to rotate for us. We might be able to do this manually one by one.
Because what we could do then is rotate and try to make some interesting uh, plots that way. But let's try it the other way. I'm going to try to build across here. Same sort of problem here. Could it be a size restriction? No. Yeah, that's better. May have been a little too small for that area, but that's fine. And let's try to rotate here too. That looks a little odd, honestly. We'll try to make improvements to that. It's gonna find us in the corner. Now oh, we could build something like that. That'll be alright. Best not to fight with it too much. more homes to boot. So hopefully that gets our population up so we can have a big militia. And it's great to see so many more people coming in. Not seeing planks increase at all from 26. And I'm not sure what happened to our manor here. But let's try to delete something so we maybe can construct it. Remove placed module. Alt left click. Destroying palace forbidden. Well, it did cut the cost down to 82. And we haven't been able to move it. Let's try to demolish this. Construction costs will be refunded. Good. Some sort of a, a game glitch here a little bit, perhaps. Not entirely sure, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. This will be something that will be either resolved at early access launch or shortly after. Seriously. And nicely done with all the stacking of the logs, too. Let's just try to build this. As is. We'll go to the castle planner later and add some more stuff to that. Not a biggie. Five people in the uh, in the city. Wow. Incredible. All right, we got 147 days until the raiders arrive. I'm not sure exactly what we'll do for raising an army, but as we get closer to an attack, it may likely guide us and tell us what to do. I sure hope so. Let's save our cash for a little while. Wow, oh, forgers are doing a lot of great work. Let's assign people to the farm for next year. We'll have a fully functioning farm in the next year. I can't believe it. And then we'll worry about the windmill and bakery after we've got some crops actually harvested but they'll be able to take care of the crops uh, started the next year beautiful oh wow we actually have homelessness no way I wow I can't believe that I thought our town was too big but it seems like I was doing the the right thing in, in the speed in which we were building okay Well, I impressed myself with that. Only got eight more stone to harvest there. How many homes are we building? Looks like two, four, six, maybe eight, ten, eleven or so. Looks like the storage is not doing a good job. They're not full. But they're not storing the things that they should be. I hope they step up. 
Oh, kind of cool. You can see a man-made path down to the farm fields. Well, that's cool. Well, I think it's time we relocate another logging camp. And maybe we could put this one further up on the hill. Efficiency up on that, I assume, because it's closer to the actual uh, <laughs> forest. So that'll have to get reconstructed. But now, once all these materials are out of here, we have a place for maybe a few more homes or something else for the city. Let's see what else might help us. Maybe even another storehouse, perhaps. Uh, maybe a granary? I'm not sure. Another storehouse would be good here, though. Excellent. Wow, lots of rain in the autumn. Very beautiful. Again, look at this. Going into our Control-C mode, you can see the whole time. Look at that. Incredible. That's screenshot worthy right there. Ready. I believe this game already has a photo mode or something similar to it coming along. Wow, look at that. That's just ridiculous. Oh, and they are starting to plant some crops. No way. Wow. Look at that. And now, let's also go into our third-person mode. You'll not find finer ways anywhere else. Wow. <laughs> Functioning market here. People operating the stalls, waving you down. Incredible. Yeah, if you needed any uh, reason to get this game, boom. Just another one right there. This was in the demo, but it's just so much more amazing now that the early access is here. I love it. I truly do. I do, I do. Oh, more money coming in? Good. Now, are we making any leather yet? No. Hold on to our cash then for a little bit. A bunch of things are under construction here. Hopefully materials are delivered again for my cursed manor. Yeah, I think we would have had it done in our last episode, but I see what they're going for with the build, the main building. And once that's done, you can reap the benefits of that. You can get taxes by having the tax office, and then you can also add defenses and um, fortifications later on. Which is pretty cool that you don't actually have to have your whole manor built all at once. So it uh, kind of makes it so that way you can build things in phases based on your village size and how much time you've spent gathering materials, which is cool. I like it. We go with another granary. I think eventually we'll run out of resources. Let's build something there. Storage, I should say. Especially now that we've got our um, farm going up. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to have more. Things are functioning. So we'll only get a surplus as more people move into the city. And then we, of course, fill the jobs with... Uh, all the people who moved in. The unassigned. Bum, bum. Man, the tree color change is outstanding. Again, just like Farthest Frontier. What a game. <laughs> what an absolute unit of a game. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. I want a picture of the windmill, too. And look at this. Just to fly through the city like this. You've been watching the whole series. I mean, you know how everything was built. This looks like it could be a new medieval open world survival game. You know, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 or something like that. But, uh, you know, it's just a good old-fashioned city builder with a lot more going for it. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, there we go. Perfect. All right, have we seen any increase to the uh, planks? No, it's still locked at 26 for some reason. Looks like a strangely non-functioning structure at the moment. I'm not seeing planks go up, nor am I seeing employees work there. The manor's also a little blurp, but I don't know what to say about that. We'll see. Go ahead and turn that off, too. Could start mining clay. And have another export. Let's see how this works. Let's build ourselves a clay furnace. There we go, some more houses going in. Let's go ahead and start mining that clay. And maybe the rest of that stone out of the way too. Throw it in storage so we can clear the area. I hope after the clay pit is done that it just becomes like a level landscape. It should actually be like a, a hole that we shouldn't be able to build anything in. but. Maybe uh, eventually it'll just kind of disappear and we can build over it and reclaim some of our land that way. Looks like our people have gotten ready with the crop growing on this field. With the other two being follow. For now. We haven't even uh, started to mine iron yet, but that will be something we do in the future, probably for making tools. That's something that can speed things along. Well, next harvest, 318 days for wheat. Love that, that they actually display the harvest. That's super helpful for preparing. And we got all these houses being built too, so the homeless problem, my, my bad. I'm sorry, they're gonna be mad about that next month. But it is what it is. <laughs> All right. Well, we have an invasion on the way. We've got a manor to rebuild and figure out. We've got a farm that's functioning and should start providing us with food in the next year. We've expanded our housing. This city has never been bigger and better and faster. This is the best of our production so far. Things are really going fast now. And uh, hopefully they continue to speed up as we get ready for the big O invasion. Thank you again, everybody, for subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much for leaving a like. Thanks for joining for more Manor Lords. Very nice. It goes by so quickly, doesn't it? But we've done so much. There's so much to do and so much more to see. So I'll see you next time in the next one. Goodbye, everybody.